Hello there. Oh man, I don't know if I'll get copyrighted for this. I don't know if I'm going to get copyrighted for that because this is actually an unreleased song I'm playing. It's coming out in two days, ladies and gentlemen. Metro, Boomin' and Future about to drop their collab album. We don't trust you. What an album title. It's just instant classic. Sorry, I'm just so hyped. I know this is Soprano's reaction, but I'm just hyped at the moment. I That's an unreleased song I've been playing for like two years, and it's finally like going to be added to my Spotify playlist in a few days, and it's going to be added to every playlist. It's going to be overplayed. I do not care when you've waited so long, and you're finally getting... Oh, man. Like, uh, what's going on, guys? My name is Ellie Moses, a 24-year-old law and film student here from Sydney, Australia. Absolutely shooting a shot. Today, we are up to episode... Three, sorry, of The Sopranos Season 6. This one is titled Mayhem, which I think is the perfect title to encap uh, to uh, sort of... Um to capture what this season is at the moment and there was a comment on one of the shorts I uploaded talking about how Ellie is nearing the polarizing season 6a of The Sopranos and I'm interested to see why it is so polarizing. I've really enjoyed the first two episodes thus far and I'm guessing 6a is like 10 episodes and then the 6b is the 11 depending on what I get up to, and I'll, I guess I'll know when the season 6A ends. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get into the reaction. This one's titled Mayhem. I'm gonna waste no more time. Let's have some fun with this thing. And as always, the energy's real. Let's absolutely smash it. I love re editing, or like, I love editing the reactions, knowing I've done a song at the beginning. I don't know, it just hypes me up even more when I edit the videos because <laughs> I'm like, these guys are about to see me listen to a song again. <laughs> What up, Paulie? I just think of my Marie, the kids. In that situation, God forbid. My ma? Who the fuck would take care of her if something happens? Except Sil and you guys. <laughs> Colombians knock off at noon, then it's empty. Manager's unit down a flight. Well, that Colombian didn't knock off. Who's in there? Open it. Yep, just shoot your own boy. <laughs> oh, no. I hate neck shots, man. I remember I watched the first, I don't know if that's a nod, nah, it's probably not a nod, but I remember I watched the first ever, like, the pilot for The Sopranos, and I remember Chris and Tony, wow, that was such a long time ago, so he's like, Chris and Tony pulled up to, like, the university campus, and they tried to take out this guy, and they were driving the car on the, like, the campus grounds, and Chris got kicked in the balls too, and it, it almost seemed like such a sloppy situation, and it, it, was, oh, it was just hilarious, I don't know, to see Chris kicking the balls, his reaction, Tony picked him up, and then they chased the guy on the campus ground. Now Paulie gets kicked in the balls. <laughs> Paulie got need in the balls. My fucking balls. Who got here? The freeze. They hit the jackpot. Nothing. Come on, let's blow. Not a fucking noise we made. Fuck that. Close the goddamn door. Fucking shit for lousy two G's. Ah, uh, nah, there, there's the score, baby. In the dishwasher. Bing! <laughs> Jackpot! You were at South Mountain Arena yesterday, trying to buy a gun from that asshole in the snack shop. Who told you that? We know how you feel, but you can't do this. I can't believe you know this. Who told you this? <laughs> Look. They know a guy. I was laying in there, shot up. I'll be thinking the same thing. But you can't go there. Yeah, why the fuck not? Listen to me, I'm your uncle. A Junior's in federal lockup. No one's getting to him there. 
Well, it's difficult, but not impossible. Trust me, your dad does not want you to get involved. You gotta channel that rage elsewhere. Golden gloves. What? Dumbbells or something. Fuck your girlfriend more. <laughs> 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 Uh, AJ, man, he his attitude is he deserves a beat down. <laughs> I swear. Hey, did you bring me my sweater? Your sweater? And Jesus, fuck! All right, take it easy. What is your problem? My problem is I'm old enough to sit with Dad all night, be a messenger boy, bring shit from the house, but I'm too young to deal with the larger issues. What are you talking about? Like you didn't put them up to it. Put who up to what? God, he was in such a good mood this morning. Who does man think he is? AJ thinks he's I him. The nurse that you are not him. His eyebrows at around 5.30. Did you pass that along? Because if not, I'm going to be furious. Mr. Soprano, you're really going to have to recalibrate your expectations at this point. We can't even maintain his blood pressure at a level that we'd like. Until his fever dissipates and his white cell count comes down, we're a long way from home. But he's really fighting. Mom, he's really strong. That is true. Who was what what's the guy's name that used to work at the butter bing? Who left and said, We gotta live for today. <laughs> and he goes ass beat. <laughs> is it George? Oh, I can't remember. Documents have been produced. <laughs> ah. I, uh, I received these this morning. Do I really look that much like this guy? To a certain extent, all Caucasians look alike. That's right. I'm not Finnerty. I didn't sell you this heating equipment. But I am kind of worried about what I might have done. I came here because I thought you could help me reach Finnerty. Now, I have his wallet. I have his briefcase. But I'm not him. <laughs> uh, excuse the brothers uh, for laughing. One day, we will all die. And then, we'll be the same as that tree. No me, no you. No, I'm you. No, you me. <laughs> no, I'm you. You, you. Someone who will take responsibility. Big up rush hour, man. Well, I can't do that. Then the lawsuit proceeds. Hey, go home. I'll stay. I just had Chinese food. I'm gonna bump into. Uh, oh. Oh, Dr. Melfi. Hi. How are you? How are you is more the point. I'm running around crazy here. My son was supposed to get coffee and to tell the maid to. It's the one thing I have to have. I got your note. They were so thoughtful. I've been calling the hospital, and they say that Anthony's stabilized. And that's what they say. If you or anyone needs anything to talk or to run interference with the doctors, don't hesitate to call. I appreciate that. Thank you. I have plenty of people around I can talk to. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Good luck. Morning, Gab. You ready? He's eating. We're picking up Mrs. S at 10. I saw her Tuesday. How's she holding up, poor thing? Not so hot, so really. Yeah. Coffee? Yeah, thanks. Good to see that Benny's recovered. You hear about the thing in the old neighborhood? I'm not busy enough, bro. A couple of guys left three on the floor in some Colombian laundry. Thank you. Two guys we know, huh? Total bloodbath. Somebody said a million plus. What a score. Damn! Fucking hey. We gotta share that amongst the boys. You said you have to go. Yeah, all right. How many guys could step into Tony's shoes and do the job you're doing? You think? You have such strength in crisis. Benny told me he feels honored to drive you. You're firm about what you want without being obnoxious about it. Sil? 
Have you asked yourself what happens if, God forbid, Tony Soprano doesn't recover? I mean, you have to take that into consideration. Listen, Gab, I never talked to you about my work. And? Let me tell you something I never told anybody. Back when Jackie was at the end, he floated the idea of me stepping up to the big seat. Not Tony, me. Really? Yeah. But I thought, it's not for me. Still, you wouldn't sneeze at it. I never saw myself as that kind of guy. Now I'm more behind the scenes. Nice. <laughs> Strategy. Hey, you don't want Gab to go. Still. The times make the man, honey, not the other way around. <laughs> you don't want Gab g going around hey, gossiping about this. Plus, there's other ancillary. No change with Tony. Carmel's in goddamn pieces. Memo, get some coffee up to Carmel's house. Benny lost weight too. Listen, Sil, I was making collections up in Roseville again last night. My time is limited. Come over, well, let's resolve this. <laughs> Paulie's balls, man. <laughs> Must have got knocked up pretty bad. Skip though. Same. Did you get something? Like my cut? You believe this guy? You should have lost some weight in that nose. Keep it out of everybody's business. I'm working on it. That's his fucking flowers right here. Get this shit out of here. That was Junior's neighborhood, so now it's mine. Oh, keep your voice down here. <laughs> so Eugene's going on three years, and Eugene was with me. He should have never had it to begin with, except for the beef with the Tasty Freeze roof. Junior ruled on it, and it wasn't right then. This fucking guy. Easy. Here's the thing. What, Skip? For the time being, it's Bobby's. But he's still going to kick up to you. 20%. As long as for the time being. Yes, sir. Why, you speak Norwegian? For now. We'll see how much is there. You gotta suck it up for the time being, man. God, you poor thing. Hey, you just need some Irish Spring. <laughs> Good morning. You gotta love how the hospital's the new HQ with all the boys discussing the business in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, at the time of well, recording. uncle has memory loss. At the time of recording this. Maybe it's hereditary. Someone's I'd probably studying that. I don't know about the accents and what you guys have said in the comment section yet. <laughs> I guess we'll find out in due time. Is it possible that I am Kevin Finnerty? All right, I'll stop. Oi, does Carmella, like, or does Tony deserve a cut from the score then with Paulie as well? Um, does it go to Carmella, um, whilst Tony is still alive, technically? Genuine question, like, I'm guessing she deserves a cut of the score, or does it go to Carmella to put on hold for Tony? You get what I mean? Like, does it go to the household? Oh, no, I'm getting flashbacks here on the toilet. On the toilet. Not Elvis Presley, man. Not like Ginny. Yeah. Sil? What? You heard about this Orange Street takedown? The Colombians. That you? My guy had the tip. Should be a nice chunk for everybody. Everybody? Carmella. She gets teased cut under the... There we go. There we go. It's your call. I know it's my fucking call. Yes, that is the correct thing. <laughs> the ladies' room next door. You're reaching from here. We're in fucking scene that I see you. She needs one brave lady. I was just saying, I'm gonna get T's piece of my half to sell here for her. Of the thing. Back up there, Bluto. Your half? I did all the heavy lifting. You would never heard about it without my information. Big help. It was fucking mayhem. You said the place was empty. Doc says I need an ultrasound on my groin and balls. So, you want to weigh in here? This is the same thing as with the Ralphie score. Remember, they had to sit down with Ralphie? And he was like... It breaks half and half. Wanted 50 Gs? To me to deal with. But he got like five? I'll have it for you, Sil. The whole 80K. Ho, 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 80K. 
How's that 20% of a million? Have a cookie, you're delirious. It was 750 tops. <laughs> Fuck it all, Paulie. Tommy case that shit all. What's with the fucking accounting out there? That's a hundred grand a piece. You got it? We're looking after Carmella. No question. Of course. Sooner than later, Paulie. I got a piss for us. You want half for that too? <laughs> I know we got to watch out for Vito, but we got to watch out for Paulie too. He has a knack for, you know, taking a little bit more than his... In a prior incarnation, I would... Like, he has a... I, we know he has a knack for taking more than what's actually there, or what's... Like, you get what I mean? Like, he did it even with the money for the gardener, um, or um, the guy who does the garden maintenance and cuts the grass, and Tony gave him, I think, a thousand for his rehabilitation, but he only gave the actual guy 500 and kept 500 to himself. Get my load on. Blow 20 residuals at the track. As oh, writers, that's the rider. It seems like he's doing okay. Hung up. Who is Grendel? But the habit. The disease. Ah. Fresh casualties <laughs> in the battle of the blank page. <laughs> Welcome to the writer's guild. Have a seat. <laughs> Take me. My past is an addict. <laughs> really, Benny? Get the fuck up. Give me that fucking fish eye. I'm offering you a way to wipe your fucking obligation. What is it me who told you to start gambling again? I can't write a feature now. I just landed a staff job. People are seeing huge profits with these digital horror movies. <laughs> Douchebags who never made a film before. That saw thing, 400 grand to make, took in 100 mil worldwide. <laughs> I'm 100% well. I deliver this script. Are you nothing? You hear this, dude? 100% well, he's a bad boy, huh? With that lingo. <laughs> Real fucking dark character. They got James Wan. My idea is Saw Meets Godfather 2. <laughs> Movie track record, both genres. Young wise guy, assassin, gets betrayed by his people. They whack him. Leave his body parts and dumpsters all around the city. <laughs> Long story short, he is put back together by science, or maybe it's supernatural. And he gets fucking payback on everyone who fucked him over, including the cunt he was engaged to. Is that upgrade? To talk by his boss and like the hero was killed. <laughs> I have a meeting tomorrow. We'll hear what you fleshed out before we go to script. <laughs> Bing. 2.30. Don't make me come look for you. Chris just gave the treatment. <laughs> hey, he would just have to tell the writers guild that was all, um, we were just acting a scene out. An entire And you did nothing! Sir, it's family only in the unit. I'll be out of here in a minute, sister. I keep telling you people, I'm gonna have to call the hospital administrator. They know the hospital administrator. <laughs> I wanted to let you know, there's a major package coming your way from Paulie and Vito. Very significant. You all have done so much already. Well, we just found out insurance won't pay for physical therapy. Bastards. So, uh, thank you. You want to come in? Say hello? Uh, sure. Ah! Hello! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have Napoleons, but I also got fruit for a certain party. Eat is good. Program says sugar after meals tells the body you're full. When you married my cousin, everybody used to say you look like John Travolta. <laughs> He's almost back to his white suit. My kid brother Billy took care of Patty and the grandkids. <laughs> Only to have that motherfucking animal, Blundetto. Don't do it to yourself, Philly. It's hard to forget. It's going to be hard to forget. It's going to come back. I Trust me. Forget. He won't forget. I forget what we're talking about. Me too. The fuck was it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> the thing is, isn't it? You want coffee, cuz? If you're already making it. Hot water and lemon, hun. Vito married that? Honestly. How can I sure Carmela? Maybe I'm not following you. I'm a supporter of the next guy. But there's a point. And what if Tony takes a turn for the worse? 
I'm gonna hand her $100,000. He dies the next day. Money down the drain. It's tempting, but you can't think that way. Thank you. I, thank you, Philly. Thank you. You all set now? Uh, yeah. I'm living it up here. You're still stewing about that money. Spend some, you'll get over it. I never get over it. Certain people, let me tell you. Oh, come on, not Syl again. Carmella, he's a fucking vegetable. But I still gotta pay tribute to the princess of Little Italy. Wow. I'm the boss's wife. What are you gonna do? Fuck, uh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everyone, everyone talking behind Carmella's back here. Usually it's the ladies gossiping, now it's the boys. Come on, boys. We got a reputation to live up to. Thank you, my head. I'm on my way in now. Yeah, good. And you might want to take care of that thing we talked about. Which thing? That big piece of pie you were bringing to the hospital? She's expecting it, so make it happen. What are you worried about? I think I know who I'm fucking dealing with here. <laughs> I resent that. You got a problem taking orders from me? Keep your shirt on. It's done. Maybe it's more than asthma for Silvio. I don't know. Don't get in bed with him again. You dislodged his drains. That was my daughter. And I can't help but think that physical affection means something. Why are the nurses and doctors at this hospital pricks? I don't know. Like, what? why are the normal people in this, like, the FBI? The, why do they seem like pricks? Like, where, where is the tone going to be? This place, huh? Is it because they know who's in ICU here and they know the type of people these people are? I don't, like, the, the, the hostility is like, man. What are you still doing out there? I got involved in a lawsuit. A lawsuit? Could create problems later. What kind of lawsuit? Hello? Also. What? I had an accident. I, I fell down some stairs. Who boy? I, I I probably know by now because of the comment section, but um because I would have uploaded an episode two of season six by now. But whoever voices Carmela in these scenes, oh my! It reminds me of the movie Her with Jacqueline Phoenix and um Scarlett Johansson voicing the AI. Oh my gosh! It's such a soothing voice. Right, come on! I need to get this voice on Amazon um Kindle or something like that. The doctor said audio books, audio book vibes. Mild concussion, he said. Told me I'd be okay. That's it. I'm coming out there. I noticed he hasn't lied to Carmela as well. Like, <laughs> you're being straight up honest about no. everything. Don't do that. Are you telling me everything? Uh. Ooh. JT, I want to introduce you to Carmine Lupatazzi, my co-executive producer on the project. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he's got mine, the John Red, and so forth. But JT, I got to warn you, I'm very hands-on. I learned that the hard way. This guy could write a script, little Carmine. Uh, he talks so to much the first shit. meeting of possible investors on this project. Some of you know I've had nine pictures under my subspecies. Four in the South Beach Strumpet series alone. Each with 30,000 plus DVDs in print. That being said, I usually find it helpful at this stage to include my prospective partners and get your inputs or <laughs> notes as we can. <laughs> my guy's speaking in alliterations, metaphors, everything. Automatopia, whatever that shit is uh, again. <laughs> we've been working on a new kind of slasher film. It takes place in the world of, you know, um, the mafia. It's about a wise guy with a big mouth and bigger dreams. <laughs> At least Chris getting back anyway, into the script uh, writing. They call him the butcher. And no, they don't. Why the fuck not? Need I remind you of a certain butcher out of AC? Right. <laughs> Go on, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, he's kind of outshining his boss, so the guy has him clipped, but he's still alive when they cut him up. Oh, he's going to feel that the next day. <laughs> <laughs> right. So at the dump, his body reassembles itself, all except for a hand that got crushed. So he ties a cleaver onto the stump, and he goes out to get revenge on everyone, especially the boss, which is a pretty solid role. 
Right now, it's called Pork Store Killer. <laughs> pork <laughs> Store. Just... Cleaver. I I'm confused. You said he's dead. How's he evening up with anybody? He's a ghost? As I understood, a, a zombie of sorts. Great title, by the way. <laughs> but if they jointed him, he's not going to end up all in the same dump. And how's that a slasher film? What are you talking about? A slasher. A couple of kids naked in the lake. Certified maniac on the loose. Hey, that's fine. That ain't. <laughs> maniac is almost always a supernatural force. Freddy, Jason, Michael there we Myers go. from Halloween. Get the fuck out. Easy, Sil. Easy. He's making a point. Michael Myers is an escaped mental patient. Jason and Freddy, different kind of movie. Oh, that's the kind we're doing here. Saw the ring. They made millions. And that's not even including the Godfather angle, which we got here. <laughs> the, the, the subversion of expectations, the merging of genres here. And they talked about Silvio wearing the white suit. And look what he's wearing now, the white what suit. They disposed him at stops that happened to be along the same route. Then he would all end up in the same dump. But he's a ghost? I don't know. Ghostbusters, another fucking money machine. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, the line delivery is superb. And, and at the time of recording this, Ghostbusters, the new Empire, uh, the, the Frozen Empire comes out tomorrow as well. Oh. <laughs> hey, this Riders Guild right here is perfection. <laughs> the, the way Christopher interjected right there with Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, another fucking money machine. <laughs> Cavalry's here. I almost forget how bad, Pete, how bad of... It's got bechamel on it, so five, six hours out of the fridge. Hey, Artie got rid of the, the mo. Hey, Artie. <laughs> I almost forget how bad they are as people with some of the scenes in the show, with some of the highs. Only when do I get to spend some face time with the skip? Hospital gets ticked off, and yeah, we'll try to sneak you. In this mob family domestic shooting, but throwing up soprano, it's just plain weird. You just want to bite it. Oh, uh, did she get her deposit from Paulie? Oh, AJ about to get an ass whooping. Oh my gosh. I swear to God, I'm gonna fucking kill you. What the fuck? You made a fool of yourself and our family on national fucking television? You gotta even say that shit. They totally misquoted me. Brother, you got caught in 4K, well, see? So... did. That's what they do. Which is why I and everybody else told you, don't talk to the press. You, you're the one who looked like a total asshole. You dragging me around like I was five years old? You're a cross to bear. That's all you are to your father, to me, to everybody. Fuck this. I fuck it all. Jesus, Mel. What the was wrong with you? What's wrong with me? Brother, what? What's wrong with me? Hey, y'all are all effed up, but like... Still. Had to happen, she's fried. <laughs> you have any extra compensation for what you've been going through? Nah, part of the job. Like they say, with great power comes great responsibility. Nah, man, nah. <laughs> well, Leo called me Skip the other day. Really? Slip of the tongue, no doubt. I noticed he didn't correct himself. See? If it did become permanent, your compensation might be... Uh, don't go there. Hey, the women just want the compensation, man. They're all about the dollars. Come on, man. Like, what? Hey, Gap. I need Sil for a second. Can you keep it short? He's pretty beat. Something happened here with the collections, yeah? This better be important, Bobby. Maybe Sil got lung cancer. Maybe the two kids in private school. This arrangement with Vito is killing me. It's 9.30 at night. Bobby, I don't remember what the fuck it was. Roseville, just temporary shit. I need an answer already. I'm going out of my fucking mind here. I, I'm liable to do something drastic. Calm the fuck down. Let me think. If Bobby's panicking, it must be bad. <laughs> my guy's usually Bobby's reserved. Are better. I'll come up with a solution. <laughs> I don't want you to worry about it. <laughs> Why, hello there. <laughs> it must have sounded odd at the supermarket the other day. To see your Tony's therapist. Oh. You know, whether it's appropriate. How can I help you? 
It's about my son. Well, both kids, really. It's a societal concern. Obviously, we learned our lesson too late. I immediately removed all the firearms from the house after the, the goings-on at Tony's uncle's. Anyway, last night, I was shrieking at my son. And I said something, I said something very cruel. And especially since he, he has been trying so hard. Oh, he hasn't. I don't think he has been trying so hard. Even before well, Tony got shot. Old, certainly, but I am more worried about them. They're, they're not kids anymore. When they were young, you know, there were certain things we could tell them about Tony's life. You know, lies. We'll just call them what they were. But now... So the issue isn't just guns in the home. Honestly, I think about my son in front of those cameras, you know, having to vouch for all of this. My daughter and her friends. They have to face all these years of, of facading. They do or you do. The minute I met Tony, I knew who that guy was. On my second date, he brought me and my mother each a dozen roses and, a, and my father a $200 power drink. <laughs> Not the typical story of young love. And I don't know if I loved him in spite of it. You know, or because of it. Yeah, I think there's parallels here from, like, Melfi and Carmela. Like, you know, she talked about from the first moment I met him, I knew who he was. And do you think from the first moment of the show that Tony walked into Melfi's room or from Tony was sitting um, in the waiting room outside at Melfi's office, she knew who he was? From the moment, from the very get-go, from the very first episode of the show, do you think Melfi knew who Tony was? Um, and she just found out more about this man as the show went on and about his mindset and how he thinks psychologically? Um, because that'd be very interesting that Carmela's saying that and Melfi sort of had the same experience. And my parents weren't like that. And I knew... You know, whether consciously or not, I knew that behind that power drill, there was probably some guy with a broken arm, you know, or, or worse. And you coped with that how? You know, I'd go to my priest and I would cry and say how bad I felt about how my husband made his money, but that was bullshit. What about the niceties? What about... Because there are far bigger crooks than my husband. What about the perks? No, what about the perks? Your husband's pretty bad, man. Like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Let's be honest here. Let's be real. But the kids that's they big don't coping <laughs> decide who they're born to so now what that i agree with yeah that's just it now what it's all out in the open now the whole thing them you know they're not in grade school anymore they become you know the longer they stay with us complicit <sighs> Putting aside the moral and legal issues, clarity can't be a bad thing. Yes. Tony's second night in a coma, I told him I loved him. When was the last time I said that? Are you afraid you aren't going to feel that way when he wakes up? <sighs> Anthony tells me things have been better between you. Silvio! Is that Silvio? It is! Now, who's gonna be. Who's gonna be who's next in the pecking order? Man, New Jersey dropping like flies. Would you move your car, please, sir? Chill. I didn't hear from you. Really? Now Bobby, come on, man. Now we're talking about that. It's very this episode's very interesting. I feel like it showed how selfish a lot of people in Tony's camp are. 
um, especially in a situation like this. It's exposed a lot of them, even Paulie and Vito. Um, and Sil's the one sort of trying to hold the fort for the skip. Yeah, obviously his wife's tried to talk him into, you know, how nice it would be to finally hold the fort, be the captain, um, sorry, be the skipper, be the boss. Um, but at the same time, still, Silvio is still the one holding it down for Tony, you know, um, suggesting that Carmela, not suggesting, but ordering that Carmela should get her 100,000. Um, so at this moment in time, I feel like Silvio is the only one I can trust in terms of like standing up for Tony, even Paulie, as much as he has highlights in this show, maybe Christopher as well. Um, but as much as Paulie has highlights, he still has his own selfish ambitions behind the scenes and even Vito. And it's going to be interesting to see. We know what Chris has said behind the scenes about Tony, but who's, who's next in line after this? Is it, is, is it Paulie? Is he the highest in the pecking order or Vito? Um, after, you know, Sylvia might be put in out of action for a while. He's on the canvas now. Fucking hundred percent disaster. Point is, Tony goes, let's face it. Somebody's going to have to step into the breach. I'm a young man, and now, without the weight, I'm a healthy man with longevity. Hey, you still, you still pretty big, man. You still pretty big without the weight. What do you mean without the weight? You still got a few pounds to go. I hear Sill is at St. Barnabas. My God, what is happening to us around here? Sill's gonna be fine. You have enough worries. This is sweetheart. I know you're expecting something, and I can't get into specifics. Tony wouldn't want me to, but there are certain people looking over our shoulders right now. It's okay, Vito. I'm not expecting anything. You a sly me... man, Vito. Like you said, I got bigger worries. Like this son of mine. You gotta trust me on this, son. Hun, hun. to get raised if we were to move it to you at this moment. Ah, uh, you're capping, man. I got this. At this moment. Well, you can just you bring it to the house. You don't have to do it at the hospital, you dumbass. <laughs> Positive talk that helps in his recovery. Got it. Uncle Paulie. Oh, Maron, he looks terrible. Uncle Paulie, you can't <laughs> say stuff. Like <laughs> Positive <Yeah>. talk. <laughs> Oops, Maron, he looked. <laughs> it's just not to prepare you for that. Uncle Paulie. <laughs> he couldn't have come in at the worst Can time. Just another time, please. Pumping the blood and everything. <laughs> She's a ball buster. All right, Finn's on his way up. I'll be back in a few minutes, okay? Remember. Positive. You can't trust this man. <laughs> you can't trust. <laughs> I gotta wear a jack, the doc says. Keep the testes elevated. Of course, it could be a lot worse, right? They gave me an ultrasound, uh, no rupture. I mean, the good thing is, I heard it doing a major piece of business. But I saw a little action, and the next thing, I was at the urologist. Fucking guy tells me I can't expect the same things from my body no more. Hey, it's going up, it's I going up. The teeth, first the eyes, then the teeth. Next the heart rate going up. Pissing for granted. Some joke, eh? When I was in the service, I won the chin-ups cup three weeks in a row. Fucking beautiful definition, too. Guy asked me to model for the boxing poster. He was half a fag, but uh, I was flat, <laughs> just the same. Now, eh, look at this. Fucking wrinkles like an old lady's cunt. You don't think it's going to happen to you, but I'm feeling it, Tom. Positive talk, yep, very positive. Phineas Fogg, back in town. He forgets all the little people. Hey, Vito. How's, how's Mr. Soprano doing? Let's hope he pulls through, huh? Yo, Vito, you need a chill, man. Hi. So glad you're here. I'm gonna let you two lovebirds be. That, don't worry about him, he's harmless. Oh, he a creep, man, he a creep. That fucking agility. I mean, do I blame myself for this life? The shit that happens? Like what puss? Stand up one day, FBI rat fuck the next. <laughs> Positive talk and the heart rate right keeps here. going up. I fucked it right here. Will you please shut up in there? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Tony echoing his yes. thoughts to the Can other to the other dimension with um Paulie right there. Shut up, bro. Shut up. Don't remind me of that stuff. Out towards 
the beacons. The beacons have been lit. Beacon anyway. Gondor calls for aid. Oh. And Rohan will answer. Shut up! Get up in there! <laughs> and I love, I love how the war is colored the same um, as Sil's clothing as well. It's almost a direct reference to, uh, so uh, to Pauly. Sorry, I love how the war is colored the same light blue as Pauly's sort of um, button up right there. And it's like Tony's slamming Pauly right there. To shut the hell up. <laughs> This is a nice ass house. Now I'm getting home alone vibes <laughs> with the shadows. Remember with the blow up dolls, it makes it as if like there's a whole party going on at the house. <laughs> Excuse me. Is this the Finity reunion? Hello there. They're waiting for you. Me? Of course. Has Kevin Finnerty arrived? We don't talk like that. What, what do you mean? Your family's in sight. He is Kevin Finnerty. <laughs> what family? They're here to welcome you. I don't understand. You're going home. I am? That's Livia. Oh my gosh, I got chills again. Ah! Is this the same house from um, Calling All Cars? And it's like the same... One where he rocks up as a farmer? Everyone's in there. Hey, that's... Look how they obscured Livia right there. Going home. Look, look at that. Obviously, he's racking focus in on a Tony, and she's in the background with the same similar hairstyle as that episode where she was freaking uh, horror movie vibes right there um, in the shadows. Turns around to look at her, and then the pillar just obstructs her face, and then she turns around at the side of him. Oh, so good. Oh, good. Everyone's in there. You're going home. The old. Can't bring business in there. I uh. I lost my real briefcase. So my whole life was in it. Is this a reference? Oh my gosh. What is that? Briefcases aren't allowed. Is, is this house a reference to the members only episode and like this is the house of where everyone's passed away the members only party of people who have passed away Livia, Tony Blundetto um you know he's the one checking the guest list and the one echoing don't go daddy is that meadow and you get the similar panning shots of the forest um to the episode uh, long-term parking with aid and obviously at the end of Tony Carmella and the voices on the outside is, 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 is those voices in the hospital telling Tony, don't go, don't go, don't go. Um, and he's on the verge right now of passing Please, away or not. Looks like it weighs a ton. I don't want to. Well, you need to, you need to let go. For some reason, uh, I'm scared. Well, there's nothing to be scared of. <laughs> Just come say hello. 
Hi. Say no, say no. Daddy. Holy moly, man. That's him being brought back to the light. Daddy, we love you. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Hey, what episode ended on a similar note with the bright light and Tony walking into it? It was whoever did this. Remember, he was alone at the butt of being right there and had that dissolve to the white. Um, that was fantastic as well. And then there was another episode where he's sitting on the balcony in Miami um, or standing on the balcony in Miami and it dissolves to white as well. He back, man. He back. He said no. He was about to go to that place and he did it. Dad, his eyes are open. Daddy, look at me right here. All right, normal sinus rhythm. Pulse and pressure? Good. Oh, oh my God, thank God. <laughs> Hang an amulet on grip and uh, send off a set of electrolytes. Now. Dad, look. Here you are. So I'm holding his hand. And all of a sudden, the machines go bullshit. They're holding his hand. Get out of here. Those fucking doctors. It's their fault. Always hiding Skip's going to make it. He's got to... Ah! <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, mother... Hey, hey, motherfuck. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, he's stress eating now. <laughs> <laughs> can't talk yet because of the tube that was in his throat. Maybe we should consider ourselves lucky there. <laughs> but we are very happy, aren't we? Anthony, you had us so worried. Well, I haven't been to church that much since I quit playing bingo. <laughs> I, I want to make that connection right there. I don't know if it's too much of a stretch, but remember he talked about with Melfi being... Oh, Something about a clown, and he's got, obviously, his face, he looks like a clown at the moment with, like, um, I don't know what Carmela's giving him, the electrolytes or whatever jelly substance or food substance she's giving him at the moment, but it almost as if he has that sort of, like, clown-like um, lipstick or makeup on his face at the moment. I'm dead, right? That's not something you want to hear, man. Mr. Soprano, how are you today? I'm Dr. V. Hops today. I'm a neurologist. How's he doing, sweetheart? I don't know if we're out of the woods yet, but he's hanging in. He just passed his first simple mental acuity test, so... Your strength. That was the difference. Oh. A little something from us. Help defray medical costs, rehabilitation. Jesus, I... I don't know what to say. This is what we do, honey. A hundred Gs, just like that. Same for my Marine. Or my ma. Look at that. Yeah, they would have done it for their family, but this is what we do, honey? Really? It took you a long ass time to do it. They did it, but like... Here if you need anything. <laughs> Look at Vito. He's so sad seeing that hundred Gs just slip away. Did we have to do it at the hospital as well? <laughs> Yeah, she knows. She knows. She knows. She knows. She knows. She saw their facial expression. Listen, T, something I wanted to talk to you about. I'm going to take another run at the movie business. Yes. Yes. I know you haven't liked that in the past, but I'm going about it in a whole different way. In fact, I'm hoping you'll become an investor when you feel a little better and I can explain what we're doing. It's pretty exciting. We'll own the neg. That's what they call it. It means negative. <laughs> I'm holding a large ownership position open for you. I hope you approve. Actually, frankly, all due respect. All due respect. I think you owe me this. Came to you about Adriana. This ah, uh, people. You've got him up. I know how it looks, but he should be. This is the wrong time to be talking to Tony about this stuff, man. I'm gonna leave you two alone. Thanks for everything. Okay. It's like they're using the boss in his state at the moment to talk about their problems. Like it's sad. Mm, I don't know how you do it.
Damn. Another fantastic episode of The Sopranos, ladies and gentlemen. This show continues, continues to blossom. It's just, it just does. It gets better and better as the show goes on. Um, and yeah, I'm interested to see what's so polarizing about season six thus far. Like in terms of, is it the character decisions they're going to go with? Is it the twists and turns? Um, in terms of the backstabbing for Tony, um, I'm very interested to see. Um, like I said, it's 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 going to take a couple of episodes um, from now, I think, to see Tony, you know, back to his old self. Even if, like, is he going to get back to his old self? Is he going to reach, um, you know, or is he going to get back to what he was pre the shooting? Um, it's going to be very interesting to see and how much he is impaired due to this situation. Um, and yeah, I cannot wait to see um, what's going to happen. Interesting to see that none of the New York boys have come to visit, um, you know, just to keep the peace and things like that. Um, I know Vito is sort of like, I don't know, a, a means of communication or a link between New York and New Jersey, kind of, because of how close he is to Philly. Um, but still, at the same time, you think the New York boys would do their um, due diligence and come visit Tony. Very interesting. Um, and I would have liked to have seen Philly get a one-on-one with Tony while he was in the coma and see what he said about it. That would have been very interesting. Um, but yeah, another fantastic episode of The uh, Sopranos. Those dream sequences are absolutely fantastic. You know, that scene at the household with Tony Blundetto there um, was phenomenal. I loved it and the way they obscured Livia yet again. And, you know, is he going to join that members-only club? Um, is he going to join, you know, them um, or those who have passed away. Um, so yeah, I'm interested to see whether if you rewatch that scene, whether there was audio or dialogue, um, from that sort of house party of other characters who have passed away in the show, like his father, um, more than just the Tony Blondetto appearance and Livia appearance. And I think it is Livia. Um, I'm interested to see if you can hear other characters besides obviously his daughter calling out. Um, so yeah, another fantastic episode of the Sopranos as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed my reaction. It's been your boy El Moses. Take care. God bless. Peace.